Ah, elegance and sophistication, right? Those aren't always words we hear when it comes to board games, but what is your favorite elegant moment in a board game, right? What is it? Maybe it's certain art lining up. Maybe it's uh, certain effects meshing with their theme really well. What is your favorite elegant moment where you just go, wow, that's nice. I'm proud to be in this hobby. Uh, let me know in the comments below because today we're taking a look at a very elegant looking game. It's a worker placement game called Penny Lane. It is an introductory type worker placement game in the sense of size and scope, but don't let that scare you off from maybe this isn't for me. Let's take a look at how um, Penny Lane plays right now and we'll come back up and talk final thoughts right now. So this is Penny Lane set up. Essentially, you're gonna start with three coins each, three pennies each. You're gonna use a star counter, and then whoever is the first player is the mayor. And that will change based on taking the mayor action. It is a worker placement game, but your workers are your pennies, which is interesting, because there are places you can go to get more pennies. There are ways you can get more pennies throughout the game, but what you're gonna be doing is trying to buy these building cards to make your lane better. Now you'll notice there are two different types. You have your residential ones, which have the words at the bottom and then your building types which have the words at the top that more matters because you're building an actual lane here and the art lines up i do love that but you're also looking for links notice that this one has a half star here whereas your main lane starts with a half coin where if you were to make this link let's see if i can find one that actually works because that's part of the fun of the game is you're trying to find links that actually work so here if you put these two buildings next to each other you gain a star the game is played to where you're trying to get 10 stars, essentially to stop the game. Now, you will get more stars based on the buildings that you have out here, but the first person to touch 10 stars, or if there aren't five cards to put out here in the building stack, the game ends, points are scored, whoever has the most points wins the game, obviously. You're gonna take your workers and do these different actions out here. The uh, town hall is you put a coin here to become the mayor, you'll take the mayor token and gain a coin, so it's essentially a free action you have to have one to do it obviously the bank now you'll notice that some of these actions have these little swirly locations if you're the first one to go there you gain the benefit for going there that's listed below so the bank will give you normally two two pennies but if you go there first you get an extra penny so it's you spend a penny to gain three pennies if you're there first these are also part of the actions these are your citizenry these can become employees of different buildings now some buildings powers won't work unless they have employees on them it says gain a dollar per employee um, and it's worth um, it's worth two coins if all the jobs are filled two stars if all the jobs are filled so some of these places when it says that doesn't just necessarily mean your employees on this tailor it means the employees in your entire lane so um, the the rules are a little bit wonky on some of the things like this though as far as uh, what counts for this card versus your whole lane it's not really clearly indicated all the time but um, you can take these that are here, and if you take the action over here at the Gazette, you spend two, you can send one of your employees or one of your citizens onto one of these locations. And once they have workers on them, they become a little bit more powerful. Now, they don't do anything. They're not workers like a worker placement game. That is, again, your pennies. But these employees will power up these buildings and make them do better things, right? Some of them will be points. Some of them will gain you more pennies to start the round with. If you can't take any more actions, you'll pass, which means that you are basically done with the pennies. So you can't spend any pennies and you can't spend any workers for the two buildings that require workers instead, or I should say citizens instead. You then pass your turn, at which point once everyone passes, the upkeep phase will happen is where you will gain one penny for sure and one citizen for sure, unless you have links that will gain you more pennies out there, which there are plenty of those out there. If you have links out there to build your, um, again, to build your lane out, you might have some that guarantee you pennies for doing things like that. Now, at the end of the game, you're gonna have this nice lane full of pennies and things like that, full of links, full of stars. The person with the most points at the end of that is the winner of the game. That is how you play Penny Lane. It is a simple worker placement game with only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight actions that are adjusted based on player count on a few of these. One, two, three, four. But for the most part, it's a straightforward worker placement game that uses the pennies as your workers. 
Well, let's talk final thoughts right now. So that's Penny Lane. It is a very simple worker placement game, right? There's only eight spots for actions, but each of those have a couple different spots on them. But the elegance of choosing, well, do I want to spend my pennies now on this action to build this building because it's cost us four, or do I want to hold out and hope we go to the bank, right? I like that push and pull. So let's talk top down first. Like, let's talk art. I love the way this game looks. Having the, the buildings line up with each other and run across that lane is so gorgeous. I love when games do that, when it, the art lines up across, 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 across the cards, right? That's one of my favorite things. So the top buildings line up and the bottom of the residential buildings line up. First of all, that looks good. Second of all, the coins themselves, the pennies themselves in the version I have looks fantastic. They're not plastic. They're not metal. They're not resin. They are in fact just cardboard punch coins, but they have an, a metallic copper look to them to where they look like they're copper coins and it really looks good when you're playing with these pennies in penny lane uh secondly the building the art themselves it looks good i love that kind of that top down view of this penny lane it looks really really good art wise this is a knock out of the park and then presentation wise this is a small box you can throw in the carry-on luggage and play in the airport if you wanted to it's really really good about that now let's talk about the actual mechanics themselves so as far as worker placements go, this might be a new introductory worker placement for me. I talk about that all the time, trying to find the game to introduce people into this genre of games. It doesn't really have a mass market uh, parallel. There is no risk to be, you know, area control, monopoly to be kind of roll and move economics game. There is no parallel in the mass market of worker placement. So I'm always looking for a game to get people into my favorite just mechanic in gaming of worker placement and this one is a fantastic entrance to this now be warned there are some knocks i have against this game that mostly deal with the rule book and some unclear rules i'm looking at you museum card does that museum card in fact mean a point per worker in your entire thing or does it mean a point per worker on that card no one's sure no one knows it's not clear it's not in the instructions so there are some rules that are not really clear that I'm not really happy about. However, they didn't really affect the main flow and feature of the game. So I, I really enjoy this game, and I'm going to stick with this game. Uh, Penny Lane is gorgeous looking. The mechanics are fun. I like the idea of using pennies as your workers. It really feels different than just using you know workers as workers. Plus, you have those employees that you can put out there on the different buildings you build. I really like Penny Lane. It's going to stay in my collection mainly just for the size and for the accessibility, but it also adds some nice mechanical issues there when it comes to the card play, right? There are those five cards, or you can play blind and go to the black market and take the top card. I like that kind of thing. I like when cards are involved, when there's a little bit of luck, but you're still mitigating that luck by playing better. I love the way the cards link together, where if you link you know, left to right, you can possibly get a new star to boost your score, or you can get more coins, which ends up being more workers. Or you can link top to bottom, or send the workers that come out from the residential areas you can send them out to get more stars. I really like the way this is tightly wound and thought up. The only problems I have are a couple rules in the uh, rule book that aren't super clear. I had to look up the residential rule to see that the residential pieces that you get that come with stars under them, you actually get a residential worker. It's in there, but it's not just as clearly, clearly laid out as I would like to see. So uh, that's my only knock is there are a couple rule issues that are a little bit fuzzy, a little bit hazy, but other than that, the game plays very neatly. It looks good on the table. It's elegant. It's pretty, it's unique. So, I recommend uh, Penny Lane. Definitely go check this out, this worker placement game. If you like worker placement games, check this one out. If you like a quick, fun filler game, check this out. It's got some medium, a little bit more weight to it than just the filler, but it fills in the filler time. So, I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we will see you. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.